and welcome to Audubon at Home. My name is Iana and this is Lisa and today we are going to talk and learn all about wetlands. Lisa, can you tell me what a wetland is? The good question. Wetlands are kind of a tricky thing to think about. So I bet you've heard of wetlands before. You've heard of a swamp or you've heard of a marsh. Those are great examples of a wetland. It's a place where kind of in the land there's a lot of soggy soil or a lot of soggy ground and there's often plants growing up from that soggy ground. So that's a, a sort of a definition of our wetland but also wetlands have a lot of special things in them. Oh, what kind of special animals or plants might we find in a wetland? Absolutely. So if we're talking about a place like a swamp here in Rhode Island our red maple trees, which are our state tree, are the trees that love growing in swamps. So they can really, they can really grow in that. Sometimes like an oak tree, they're not going to do so well in a swamp. So some trees do well in swamps and some don't. In a marsh, there are plants like what you see behind us. This is a plant called Phragmites that likes to grow in marshes. Another plant that we sometimes see in marshes are called cattails. I bet you've seen those before as well. So those plants are pretty typical of a marsh. Maybe you've seen ferns or skunk cabbage. Those are also kind of marshy plants that we might see. Interesting. So plants like that, like a skunk cabbage or a cattail, would we be able to find those outside of a wetland, like in our backyards? Well, if your backyard is kind of soggy, sometimes you can grow things like that. Most of our backyards aren't usually that wet and marshy, so most of the time we're not going to find that in our own backyards. But occasionally the edge of our backyard might have a little marshiness or might be able to have a red maple, for example, growing in it. So sometimes we might see that in our backyard. Hi everyone, my name is Lauren. Wetlands are important for so many reasons. Wetlands can act like a sponge and soak up storm water. Wetlands provide food for so many different kinds of animals. Wetlands are nurseries for fish, crabs, and other species. Wetlands help filter out pollutants. Well, wetlands provide lots of homes for all sorts of animals, like turtles and woodpeckers in the hollow trees, and ducks and snakes, and little tiny creatures that you have to use a net to catch and look at. Wetlands help recycle nutrients. Wetlands provide stopover places where animals can rest along their migration. So many reasons why wetlands are important. Please help us protect our wetlands. Thank you. Hi everyone, it's Lisa again. Thank you for joining me here in the swamp at Audubon. I want to talk a little bit about how wetlands work so that you can understand one of the reasons why we think they're so important. So to help us understand this, we're going to do a little experiment. For this experiment, I have this one uh, bin that doesn't have any holes in it. And then I have a second bin that does have holes in it. This is going to represent our wetland. Our sponges are going to represent the soil or the dirt in the wetland. Okay, so I've got my, my bin with the holes in it with its soil or dirt in it. And then I've got my bottom part, which doesn't have any holes. Now, anytime it rains, you might notice that the water runs down to the ground. Sometimes it runs off, right? So we're gonna see what happens when a storm hits this wet. Meet our storm. So we're gonna put some water into our cloud. We're gonna seed our cloud here, and we're gonna rain on the wet. You can try this at home if you've got sponges and something like a colander or something with holes in it. All right, ready for storm? Storm Lisa, here we go. So we're gonna pour ourselves onto the wetland here and we're gonna see what happens when the rain hits the soil, okay? Now you might already be thinking about what's gonna happen because when you put water on sponges, 
Usually those sponges do a really good job absorbing the water, okay? So first, let's see how much water went through. Actually didn't stay in the sponges. I'm gonna take the top off of that, okay? And let's take a look. So there's a little bit of water in there. I'm gonna pour that out behind me here. This is just fresh water, so we're not gonna put anything that shouldn't belong, okay? Here we go. You can see, oop, I missed. You can see that that much was in the bottom of our wetland. Now let's, now let's see how much ended up in the sponges, okay? Here, we can put them back into this thing. Sponge number one. Ooh, that's interesting. There's some water right there, okay. Sponge number two. Ooh. There's more water in there. Sponge number three. Okay. You can see the water in there. And here's sponge number four. Those sponges did a really good job absorbing or soaking up the water in that wetland. Okay. So if we put the water back in here, it should be almost full, even though I spilled a bunch before. Okay, so that's about the water that we started with. It seems like the sponges absorbed a lot more water than went through the holes during that part of the experiment. So now we're gonna change the experiment a little bit. I'm gonna put my soil back in the wetland and I'm gonna add something this time. Let's say that someone came along and they chopped down the trees in my nice little swamp here and they put a parking lot. So they paved paradise here and put up a parking lot. So we're gonna see what happens when we rain on our parking lot and see if that's any different, okay? So we'll use the water. Here, we'll use the same water. So we've got, not quite full, but we'll use the same water. That okay, we so we refilled the watering can. So this time, Storm Lisa is going to rain on the parking lot and you might notice it being a little bit different the way it goes, okay? So as I'm raining on the parking lot, you can sort of see what's happening. You've got some puddles happening. Some of the rain is going off to the sides. Okay. So, there's still some puddles on the top of that parking lot, but on the sides where there was some soil, maybe it absorbed some of the water. Okay, so we'll do what we did before. Let's take the bottom off. Okay, and let's see how much. That looks like a little bit more maybe than we saw before. Let's pour that back into our bottle. Yeah, that seems like a little bit more than last time. Let's see how our sponges did this time. So we'll take our parking lot and we'll put it over to the side. Sponge number one was on the side. So it seems like some of the water was able to go off to the side on that one. Sponge number two was covered by the parking lot. Sponge number three was also covered by the parking lot. And sponge number four was on the side again. Seems to me like the ones on the side absorbed a little bit more of the water. But you can see this time that a little bit less of the water was absorbed by the sponges or soaked up by the sponges and a little bit more, to, more of it ran off to the sides. So our wetland then, how does, this, how does this make us understand how a wetland works? Our wetland has soil or, or dirt like our sponges. And when it rains, it soaks up the rainwater so that it doesn't end up running over and flooding people's basements and flooding our roads. If there's wetland soil around, it'll help absorb that and it'll help prevent flooding. But if there's not soil like that, if there's a lot of parking lots and there's a lot of sidewalks and there's a lot of um, driveways and a lot of those kinds of things, this is a surface that the water can't go through. It gets stuck on the top or it runs off to the side. And that's what causes those floods that we sometimes see when it rains a lot. 
So having wetlands around, one of the really important functions or, or jobs of a wetland is to take that extra water and soak it up and hold it a little bit longer so it prevents floods. Thanks for exploring wetlands with me today and thanks for joining us for Audubon at Home.